if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Mm-hmm. Who's going to make sure that my family's taken care of? Me. I'm the man of my house. Like, I'm the provider. That's what I was raised to be. I was raised to take care of my family and be a man of God. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I need a little subtle reminder through, like, a motivational video or maybe I need to find, like, different ways to, like, remind myself that that's who I am. But really what it is is just reminding me that I'm that badass MF that handles mm-hmm. business and gets done what I need to get done every single day consistently. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Wall. Today, I am joined with one of my good friends, former teammate, Nick Dawkins. Thank you for joining me, brother. Hey, no such thing as former teammate, dog. We brothers for life, man. We teammates for life. You know hey. what I mean? My guy. Come my on dog, now. my dog. Just finished up spring ball. <laughs> mm. I know that is a treacherous time, man, but y'all got through it. How are you feeling coming out? It is uh, Monday after spring ball, after the yeah. blue and white game. It was a windy one out there, but how how, how your body feeling? How are the boys feeling after that? Yeah, I mean, the guys are always good. Um, the reality of it is, like, you know, once you get a little freedom, you know, uh, we spring ball's taxing. It's like our it's like spring camp, we like to call mm. it. Um, but now that, like, we got a little time that, you know, summer you can go home, see your family, um, do something other than football for a little bit and be a normal human contributing to society once again, um, that's that's good. I mean, we all love ball. Like, we love what ball does and, like, who, what it, like, who we are and, and just the game, but you know, when you get a little time off, I'm sure all my guys that played know that it's a, it's a pretty good feeling to not be playing mm. for a little bit. So the body's recovering. I didn't I didn't take too much damage this spring ball, to be honest mm. with you. Um, we had a good physical spring ball, um, but I think I attributed that to um, stretching uh, with Coach Earls. To be honest, I'm like how stretching help you mm. with like getting hurt and such. But like when you put yourself in, um, when you're like stretching and putting yourself in weird situations, uh, but your body like you're more like slender and like lender and. You can move around a lot better. When you get rolled up on the stuff, it doesn't hurt as bad when you get up. So Yeah. Yeah, shout out Coach Earls for that. Coach Earls, great yeah. guy on the strength staff over there with Coach Losey and the guys. Mm. Um, no, I definitely – I started to feel that toward the end, but can you speak to that? Like, as as you get older, I feel like you come in right away. You look around. I remember I would look at Juice Scruggs, and he would do, yeah. like, an hour of prep before yeah. any type of practice, workout, or mm. lift, or anything like that. And I was like, man, I don't need to do all that. And you, when you were a young cat, you were a freshman. Yeah. You just hop right into the workout, no stretch. Yeah. You, just, you just raw, you just raw, yeah. raw talking the yeah. workout. Uh, but I feel like once you get older, like, you really have to take that serious. So, like, what's some of like the preparation that you do, whether it be like boots, stretching? You just talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. Oh, for sure. I'm an old man. I learned that from Hunter Norris, that who was an older man. Man, mm-hmm. he was a, I mean, really, my journey here, all the centers that have been above me since I since I've been here have been like two or three years older than me. Like even Juice was old, a lot older than me. Hunter, uh, even last year, was two years older than me, and now I'm stepping in, and I'm 21 years old now, so mm. I guess I'm the old guy. Yeah, old um, for sure. Yeah, but I'm, our preparation, uh, I saw, really, Coach Earl, me and Coach Rose get together, and we put together a plan. Um, so I stretch uh, an hour before the team meeting, so that's a full hour of stretching, doing all kind of all kind of movements, and then an hour before that, so two hours before the, uh, the team meeting, I get in the recovery pumps, like you said, mm-hmm. and get in the hot tub, so... The recovery pumps, uh, if you guys don't know, like Norma Tech boots, they basically compress um, the leg down and just help with blood flow flowing to the legs, getting like the body ready for movement and such. So hop in that, do that for 45 minutes, uh, get in the tub, stretch in the tubs for 15 to 20 minutes, um, get the body right. I take um, my glutamine and my creatine beforehand mm-hmm. to some supplements, uh, some amino acids and such, and then... Um, Collagen as well. Leanne mm-hmm. always puts out the – Leanne's our nutritionist. Uh, she puts out uh, collagen for us, and I, that's how I get the body going. Hey, man, it's, it's, it's definitely, a, definitely a process to, mm-hmm. to keep your body right throughout college football because it is a grind. And that I think that is the difference that some people don't understand. Like the fans, when you get to the league – their their whole thing is keeping you healthy, yeah. finding any way uh, to just keep your body fresh because you're getting older and you have wear and tear on your body. But in college football, man, it is attack, attack, attack. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't they don't care too much about that about your body. So you have to go out uh, yourself and kind of seek that out with the training staff, uh, with the strength coaches, and that that type of deal. Um, Nick, headed into year five, man. Finally Jeez. headed into that, that. Yeah, I know. It's crazy yeah. to say. It feels like I just got here the other day, and you yeah, were man. you were a young cat. I was a young cat. So it's definitely crazy, man. Time mm. flies. But heading into year five, starting at the center position, man, what is, what is that like? Are you excited? And obviously being the leader of that offensive line. Mm. Had some great centers before you, man. Absolutely. Mike Miranda, yeah. Juice Scruggs, uh-huh. Hunter Norzad, yeah. bunch, of, bunch of mine and yours, OGs. Uh, what's it like to kind of follow in those footsteps uh, and, and be the leader of this offensive line and the offensive line that is pretty young outside of our old head, Sal Wormley, yeah. coming back for <laughs> his sixth year yeah. outside of Sal Wormley. Mm-hmm. It's a real young offensive line. So what's that like uh, coming into this, you know, big-time leader role? 
Yeah, um, I mean, I, maybe you can speak a little bit to this, but I kind of always felt like that a little bit. Like, I always felt mm -hmm. like I've been a leader within the room, even when I was younger. Um, and not to say that, like, I was always the captain or I was always vocal, but um, just living my life the right way. Um, but I, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I mean, I'm year five, man. You have to be ready by now. Like, what's the point of coming back if you're not going to play? What's the point of coming yeah. back if you're just going to sit there and watch something happen? Um, but, no, nah, I mean, just naturally I, I feel um, the guys, um, we, we just gel well, like well together. Um, Travis done a great job bringing the right program guys in. Um, more specifically, I'll give you a point to a guy, um, Vanga, who's going to mm. be elite, I think. Vanga's going to be a long-time NFL player. Um, had a great spring game. Had a great camp, like training camp uh, for spring. And he's a culture guy. Like he's, I could see him being a captain within maybe maybe this year, but I could see him mm. being a captain within the next two years. And when you have guys that are naturally bought in uh, to who we are as an offensive line and to the offense and all that stuff, man, it makes it easy to go out yeah. there and just you know preach the right message because you already know they're going to follow it or at least they're going to pay you the ear to listen to what's, what's being said and, and respond. So. Mm. Yeah, I, you said I can speak to it. I definitely can. This man, Nick Dawkins, we do call him the disciplinarian on the <laughs> offensive line. Look, if, if you miss a class, if you mess up on a test, whatever it may be, you have to go see Dawk. To get punished, man, and you you yeah. don't want to go see Doc. So I, which, I think which, you you might have had to get me once. Nah, I, I don't know. Which, I remember. I tried I tried to stay out of the way, which rarely but, happens on O line. Our guys do not yeah. get in trouble. No, they, they no they do. do. I, I will say, offensive linemen, for, from a standpoint of, of just staying out of the way and yeah, doing yeah. the right thing, the offensive linemen, especially at Penn State, but I feel like really everywhere is like the most solid group that just doesn't mess up. Man, it's like I always like I have like friends or like. Maybe like um, just cousin or something. Like talk, they're like, yeah, I want to talk to like a football player. Like, all right, so they want to always ask if I know him, especially if a Division One mm. football player. Someone's gonna be like, do you know who this is? I'm like, first question is, are they offensive linemen? If they're offensive linemen, you know, if you're a girl out there, if you're talking to an offensive lineman, you're probably taken care of. The guy's naturally just gonna try to take care, he, to take care of people. Usually yeah. a jolly fellow, probably was a little chubbier in middle school or high school, maybe growing up at some point. You know how humbling it is? You know, you you are a big fat guy, re realistically. I was a big fat guy. You lose a couple pounds, start getting some muscle on, you start it looking a lot better. Good. You still have the personality mm. from when you were that big chubby guy trying to fit in. So when you mix that in with a little bit of muscle, add a couple tattoos in there, maybe a maybe a cross earring in the side, oh. maybe a little lights can get a fade. I tried that. Kind of helps you out a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 no, it's true. Any listen, I don't know how many women are listening to this podcast, but get you an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be messing with them wide receivers and DBs. No shade to They'll those break your guys. Heart. No shade to them, man. They'll break I'll your shade? heart, okay. man. Yeah, they're used to the cameras. They're used to the attention. You know, they score the touchdowns. They bring it all in. Who are we? In the shadows, right. doing the dirty hard work nobody else wants to do. And that's the kind of man you need in your life, a consistent man who does what nobody else wants to do. There you go, ladies. Get you an <laughs> offensive lineman, man. <laughs> um, so just la last little piece of football till we get in some personal stuff. But uh -huh. I, I do want to ask you about Andy Kotonicki yeah. uh, and how that transition has kind of been. Uh, obviously, Mike Yurisich the past two years and now coming in, Andy Kotonicki coming over from Kansas. And seems like he's bringing a new look to this offense. We've seen uh, a couple guys in the media come out and say it is a completely new look offense. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also saw Caden Saunders after the game Someone asked him, how much of the offense did we really see in the spring game? And he said about 5%. Maybe. Can, yeah, can, yeah. Can, you, can, can you attest to that? Oh, Is that man, the truth? Oh, sure. And, like, I mean, you fans got to know at this point, like, the spring game's going to be as vanilla as they come. Mm -hmm. So don't look for new schemes and such. Because that's what everybody's watching. Everyone in the country is going to watch a spring game, especially if coming for the first game. They're watching Kansas tape to see what maybe he did at Kansas. Then you can watch a spring game. So why would you want to give another team uh, some sort of competitive advantage, especially what, across the nation? They're like, why are spring games not as high scoring? Because everybody's just running base stuff. Yeah. So if you want to see pure ability and athleticism and strength and people just being able to play ball, that's a good – so individual base, it's pretty good because guys are just playing within the basic framework of the offense and the defense. But if you're looking for grant, like groundbreaking schemes and mm. twists and, and stunts and motions and all that and, like, t triple options and all that, like, you're not going to find that in the spring game. But yeah. you saw a little piece of the offense. But even just speaking to him as a, as a person, man, he just brings it every day. Yeah. Like, he, he brings it in. I have so much respect for how he carries himself um, as OC. And, and, and this is something that um, obviously no shade do we had before. Um, but guys are just so bought into the offense right now. And no. I, you can definitely see, I mean, last two years, three years, I, I mean, ever since I've been here, we've, we've had an elite defense, an elite defense, a top five defense. Um, and the offense is always like uh, trying to keep up with them, especially in practice. It's not close. Mm. And now 
you see us bringing it to the defense, and that's yeah. something that we were absolutely lacking in the past. And starting fast and being explosive, and that's that's what we needed, and that's where we're at right now. And you see guys. Um, I think in the past, guys were scared to make a mistake, and you obviously no one wants to make mistakes in any capacity of the game. But when you play like with no fear, you mm-hmm. can play fast, and that's what we're doing right now. And it's 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 really I'm I'm just so excited for the season to see everything unfold with all the plays and everything we have in. It's I'm excited. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, especially even from a standpoint of now kind of being a fan. That, that mm-hmm. gets me excited, man. Because um, and it's, and I think from a player standpoint, it means so much. To, to be fully bought in, like you said, yeah. like that com- that changes everything when a when a team and, and you know a side of the ball completely believes in in their their head man. And I think we saw that the past couple of years with Manny Diaz. Yep. that defense played with freaking heart, man. Like yeah. they would go out and they and you saw them they get picks and they want to run over to Manny, deliver him the ball. Like he he got them fired up. And we would hear, I mean, we'd be in the team meetings, man. He'd be talking to the defense, yeah, and man. Man, Manny would get us fired up over on the offensive side. So I think to you know finally have that spark. At the offensive coordinator position is fun, and like you said, it gets demoralizing after a while when you're going against the top three defense and they just keep winning in practice. And you mm-hmm. look at those competition periods, and they're up by like 20 points because yeah. we'll, we'll keep track of it and that type of thing. And it gets a little demoralizing. So it's nice to finally give them a little bit of their own medicine. Yeah. Uh, but but obviously a, a defense that is really talented. And I did want to ask you this: you gave a shout out to Vanga. Uh, that's someone I think to be really excited about on the offensive line. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm really excited about Donka, Anthony Donka. I think Dude, he's going to be natural. Yeah, he's natural. He, he's going to be a beast. If you watch the the Peach Bowl, so many people don't even know. He was barely taking any tackle reps until bowl prep. Started yeah. getting some reps in tackle bowl prep. And I'm like, this kid can play tackle and ball it out in the Peach yeah. Bowl. So it's like, God. I'm, Man, I know I was talking to him, and he's like, I'm, I'm even more comfortable over there. I like yeah. it. And it's, yeah, he was at left guard the whole yeah. season. Yeah. And, I mean, not only switching sides. I mean, as an offensive lineman, switching sides at, when you play the left side for a whole season and then mm-hmm. go over to the right, it, it's like using the bathroom with the opposite hand. Like, it does not feel right. So, he, not only is he going. Wow, okay. I, well, <laughs> you know, actually, yeah. you can attest to this. We both have had shoulder, shoulder surgeries. Yeah, it's right. And, you, okay. got, you know, it, it's hard sometimes. You got you, you to gotta figure it out. Yeah, uh, okay. But it, it doesn't, okay, it doesn't okay. feel right. All right, I got you. Yeah, okay, you picking, I know up, what you you picking up what I'm putting wiping down with the other hand. Okay, with, man. I like that one. Hand. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. That's that's how it feels. So for him to be able to go from left guard to right tackle uh, and perform that way, really, no no sacks. Uh, I think maybe maybe one pressure, but he pretty much had it locked down yeah. in a game where we had to sling it about 45 times. Uh-huh. It is extremely oppressive. Not even to mention he's a freshman. So I think you know. The roof, the sky's the limit with, with Anthony Donk. I'm excited yeah. about him. I do want to ask you, though, someone on the defensive line that you are really excited about. Yeah, D-line specifically, I'll give you two. I mean, mm-hmm. of course, um, Zane Durant. Mm-hmm. Zane Durant ha- has had an elite spring ball. He's an elite player. I was telling you before this pod, I think he'll be in the NFL for a long time. Yeah. And it's easy. Everyone, you can say names. You can say big names like Aaron Donald and such. But, man, he gets mm-hmm. flashes sometimes. I mean, they, they call under his side. I don't believe in the undersized D lineman hype. Like they call D lineman undersized, bro. Mm-hmm. The smaller D linemen are harder to block. They're like they lower, they, they have they lower the center of gravity. They can stay up yeah. in natural leverage, and and pad levels everything in the trenches. Like that's something I'm still trying to work on. Like you want these big old guys, maybe tackles to make up for length and such like that. But when you're playing interior, shorter is not a bad thing. Shorter gives you natural leverage. Um, and a mean Vanover. I think mm-hmm. Amin Vanover is the most accurate representation of Penn State football. We even who his character, like his character, and then how he attacks the game. When he goes in the game, he wreaks havoc. He wreaks havoc. The guy is a natural bower, natural football player, and he cares a lot about this stuff, man. He yeah. cares a lot about the team. He cares a lot about Penn State. And he's passionate, and you just want to follow him in through a ravine, man. He just yeah. is a natural leader too. Like, and sometimes I don't think he understands it, like what he can do. But I mean, you can speak to it. Amin is just a passionate cat, Dude. man. And there, ain't, there ain't nothing worse than I don't know. You haven't experienced this because you've been at center, but I played mm-hmm. tackle my first year and kind of second year. Being against Mino out on the island, yeah. he will hit you with the most lethal spin move <laughs> you've ever seen. Yeah, he, he is a, he is an inside move demon. Yeah. and I, I was on the sideline for the spring game, and when he caught that pick, it was a it was a screen yeah. uh, uh, of of the middle, and he said he was coming over, he was yelling, he he actually said I, he, it was an MA, he missed assignment because he yeah. he dropped back. He was yeah. like, I'm I'm just playing with my feel. 
picked mm-hmm. it off with those big mitts. You know how big his hands are. Yeah, and uh, oh, okay. that's what I think he needs to do more of yeah. is just play with that feel, man. Because yeah. like I said, he, he said he wasn't supposed to do that. But he, he when he just gets in his mode and uh, and just plays ball, he is such a natural athlete. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what we can do. I was just talking about that on a couple different shows. Our DN depth. Is pretty insane this year. A couple yeah, other, I'm excited about Jamil Lyons too. Mm-hmm. Dude, that that kid, he can ball. He had a great game on Saturday. He did. Uh, but Nick, I do want to transition, man, to back in the day, high school, being a being a recruit. Take me back to Parkland. Uh, sure. h- how how was your high school experience? Like, I, I know some guys get offers earlier on. When yeah. did you start to pick up interest from colleges? Uh, and when did your play really start to take off in high school? Yeah, for sure. I mean, to start things off first, you called me Nick, man. When have you ever called me that, bro? I'm dark. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That was <laughs> weird, bro. I guess we're all formal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm getting all formal because we're on a yeah. podcast. My fault. Nicholas He's Paul Dawkins. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your real name, Richard? Uh, Christopher. Oh, Christopher Landon. Yeah. Christopher Landon Tangwall. Christopher. Yeah. Come on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Big Chris. True Shout- Quaker, yeah. Yep, shout out Big Chris. Um, go my high school, man, Parkland High School. I I mean, I, I've talked with Tyler Elson about this, and maybe you feel the same way. When you play that gritty public school, Pennsylvania ball, it means so much. And, uh, you know, I, I hope when I pass away, I'm able to replay my high school football career. Just the fun that we had. And, like, mm. the, you, I mean, you grow up playing, like, I don't know if you shared this experience because I know you played for a more, like, prestigious um, and a, a higher-ranking high school than I played. Um, but... I grew up playing football with the guys I played in high school. So that's essentially like 12 years of football with those guys. And yeah. I wouldn't trade that for the world. And I true, I, I, I look back at my time and I'm just so happy and so blessed that I was able to experience a true like Friday Night Lights type yeah. football, uh, high school football. Dude, I, I think I say this to people. Like as cool as it is to come out of Beaver Stadium, even a whiteout yeah. where it's, you know, 110,000 people and it is insane, nothing – is even close to those Friday night. I'm getting shivers. Yeah, like my hairs are literally yeah. standing up thinking about it. Yeah. Friday night lights where you are just out there with your boys balling. It yeah. is the purest form of football, football yeah. that there is. And you are just having fun and you're doing it for the love of the game. Because as much as we want to say we're just doing it for the love of the game, like you're out there balling, you're thinking mm. about your family, you're trying to get to the league. Yeah. It wasn't like that in high school, man. Like you might be trying to get offers, but you are out there just playing for the love of the game, having fun with your boys. So I, I would say any high school uh, player, high school football player, really high school anything, though, that is where the game is at at its most pure. So just enjoy it, man. Be in it. Uh, just revel in it and, and have a good time because when it goes, it goes fast. And when it goes, you don't ever get that again. Uh, as much camaraderie as, like, in our locker room here, yeah. uh, it, it's just not the same, man. So I, I definitely feel like people need to uh, enjoy that and soak in it a little bit more. But, man, I, I, I do want to ask you about high school football yeah. and where, where it's the best at. Because there's all this talk <laughs> of, like, Florida, Cali, all this stuff. Bro, you know I'm going to say the DMV, that's yeah. how we get down. You have made the statement that PA public, public schools can, can hang with the, with the top schools and the nation. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's how you feel. Yeah, I do. I do feel that. I do. I said hang. I didn't say consistently beat. Okay. okay. I, they can hang. I think the best – High school football was in Florida, hands down. Okay. There is way too yeah. many athletes that come out of it. Like, so it's much crazy. potential comes out of Florida. I'd say maybe the, mo- the most polished comes out of the DMV in Texas, mm. but the best comes out of PA, man. And the reason I say that mm. is just because, I'm obviously, I'm biased. I played it. Yeah. I played against those guys, and, like, I played it. I played it, and it feels like a movie when you play it, um, and it's gritty. I'll say this, I think that we would outgrit any team in the mm. DMV. I got guys, I was playing football with guys who will never play football again. Uh that guys that are in the army now, guys that are in the plumbers, guys that are Ugh. that are fixing up label like the cable <laughs> lines right now. Like they play the game strictly out there to play the game. And yeah. they would do whatever it took to get you out of there to win the game. It did not matter. It didn't matter about anything other than getting the job done. Which I mean, you had guys probably trying to preserve their careers, trying to play Ugh. college, trying to play in the NFL. We had guys that NFL, they're like they laughed at the idea of even maybe of trying to go there. They're like, no, I'm here for this game, this moment. And you got the, the thing you have to be scared of is a guy who's not afraid to lose anything. And we had a, we had not one, but multiple majority <laughs> of the team guys not scared to lose anything, but would take anything from you. Uh, and that's public school Pennsylvania gritty football. Wow, man. Okay, yeah. I mean, you've told me some stories. It definitely sounds like you had some soldiers, especially on the offensive line there with with you uh, over there, at Parkland. <laughs> Dude, I do want to ask you specifically, like, what's yeah. what's the most uh, what's the best team, like, most challenging team you've played? Uh, any like playoff game, something like that. Yeah, I mean, we 
so we would go to the um, state quarterfinals every year and play St. Joe's Prep. Ooh, I played them rough. Yeah, you, they're a tough team, especially for a team that, like, we're in high school. We're not recruiting nobody. Mm. And, um, you know, we are playing against Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyle McCord, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. You hear all those juniors? Those are NFL legend sons <laughs> we're playing against. That's football pedigree. We're playing against the, the famous dynasty family football. Like, it's, it's absurd. Mm. And we're playing against, like, DeAndre Swift putting as DeAndre Swift and we got guys out there who probably just failed an algebra two test struggling um and now you have to go out there and try to tackle DeAndre Swift who when we played him mm. guy wasn't playing he was chilling all of a sudden right. we're talking about a playoff game we're talking about and he, so he didn't court. start so he was yeah we we're like oh he's banged up like all right cool guy throws on the cleats like he's he's on a covenant bike biking someone from the crowd brings out some cleats like, what's going on? Like, what's going on? <laughs> they bring the cleats out, put them on, laces up. We're like, oh, he's playing. Like, all of us are like, oh, no. I've, I've never heard the word, oh, no, used in real life before. He said, oh, no. He put the cleats on, bro, dot, dotted us up, man. Ran it all over us, man. No. Ran it, conquered our lands like Genghis Khan, bro. It was horrible oh. out there, bro. Like, it was his field that night, unfortunately, for the, for the boys in the red. The, oh, the, the, the no. Parkland Trojans suffered a, a serious defeat. It was a close game, to be quite honest with you, but he, he I mean, he's DeAndre Swift. Yeah, that's when the, DeAndre Swift. Yeah, yeah. When, those, when those NFL, and you, you realize and you recognize when those guys in high school, you're like, that dude's going to play in the league. Yeah. And that's kind of how it was. And that's, I, I played uh, my sophomore year. I played St. Joe's Prep as well, mm -hmm. and Marvin Harrison took us for three touchdowns. <laughs> Kyle McCord was dealing them. Yeah. And it was it was rough, man. They are they were some talented talented guys over there. So it, it is hard it's hard to compete, but I will I will give it to you. You guys are you're gritty over there uh in, in PA <laughs> public school. But I know we were just talking about high school and recruiting. I kind of want to take it back to your childhood a little bit uh and talk about some of your influences. Obviously, yeah. we know the Dawkins family, man. Y'all run deep. Yeah, we I do. mean, you got some. I mean, can you talk about a couple of your family members around yeah. around, the, around the leagues? Uh, you know, that retire or still playing? Yeah, I mean, the, like my dad was one of eleven kids, and the Dawkins family reproduced rapidly. So I got a lot of cousins. So <laughs> my dad, Daryl Dawkins, played in the NBA for thirteen years, I think. Um, mm -hmm. My cousin, Deion Dawkins, played uh, college ball at Temple. He's now the starting left tackle for the Bills. Just signed a, a yeah, he's killing yeah, it. Just yeah, kill he, it. Captain, he's rich. That boy's all rich. pro, all pro. Mm. Um, signed his extension with the Bills. Uh, other cousin Brian Dawkins. Obviously, I don't really think he needs an introduction. No. Weapon X, NFL Hall of Famer. Um, my dad's cousin uh, Johnny Dawkins. He's the uh, he played at Duke. Played in the league for a little bit. He coached at Duke, and now he's the head coach for. Um, uh, for UCF men's basketball, and okay. it, and then um, if people are real big college basketball fans, I remember Andre Dawkins played for Duke, um, was real key in the March Madness tournament, um, and the fam the family's kind of crazy, like we're all crazy, all of yeah. us like all of us have like glimpses of our personality, like it's not well, none of us are normal people, and any, I guess I'm probably the most normal as they come, and I mean you can probably say I'm not I'm not normal guy so. no definitely not yeah, not, no, not, no, not no. dog you want you anything you're a lot of things but you anything yeah, but ordinary normal, that's for sure yeah. man um growing up like what type of impact did your father have on you as far as like sculpting you yeah. I, I have seen i will say I, i've seen your basketball skills yeah. you definitely did not get that from your pop yeah. i'm sorry to say it brother for sure no i keep hearing you say stuff about my play in basketball but like <laughs> this is spoken from a guy who's also horrible so like no, i don't act like you're good like you're bad too bro so. I, I you're right but i yeah. came on the pod and i spoke truth that yeah. I dropped twenty and twenty nah, that at an intermural. Nah, that ain't true. No one came. No one came into your defense about that. Like, not even <laughs> anyone. Like, nah, guys, he actually did it. Now you lied. That was a, just a bold faced yeah. lie. He did not drop twenty and twenty, dude, ever in your life. No, you probably couldn't do that in the shoot around. But um, <laughs> the reality of it is, like, I can't hoop for my life. I can play defense, and I'll give you. Mm. I'm giving you serious elbows in the post. I'm. I'm. I'm breaking down your like. Bring your best guy out there. Uh. I'm breaking his confidence. I'm. Ga I'm clamping him up. And I'm probably he's leaving with a couple of bruises if you okay. Leave yeah, gritty court. basketball. You're talking I'm, about gritty. You uh, gritty yeah, basketball. I'm gritty ball play. player. I'm not putting up any points though. My right. stat line's looking like 50 rebounds, 10 fouls. Ooh, probably. You're fouling out. You were I'm fouling you, out. When you played the first as a young quarter. kid, did you did you foul out a lot? I was always close. I teetered. Yeah. You usually subbed me out and put me back in the yeah, game. Yeah, well, that. you need that aggressive kid to kind of just set the set the energy set down the there energy. in the middle. But but uh, no, yeah. But, but from a standpoint of like yeah. how your father, you know, sure. how how he raised you. What what was that like? I'm sure. I mean, he was he was a massive man, and I'm sure he yeah. was you know very influential on your life. So you could just speak to that a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. My dad was um, obviously one of the best men that I've ever been able to be around, and um, I emulate everything he does and who he's made me into. Um, you know, my dad. I lost my dad when I was 14, and to be able to um, 
still recall lessons that he's taught me at a, at a young age and he I just want to be I want to be him so bad man I do and I, I like I miss him every day like I just, like even like after this blue and white game I'm like man like I wish my dad was there to like see that and um, mm-hmm. you know go through college like have your know, first girlfriends first kiss all that stuff like the stuff you tell your dad about like how to shave and I miss mm-hmm. my dad a lot man but he he just um did everything the right way as a man of God and like you know led me through, you know through my path through being a man and doing things the right way and treating people with respect and 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 being the best man you can be for for your family and understanding that this life that we have is um a blessing and you don't live it for yourself you live it for the greater purpose and um mm-hmm. that that was really something that he ingrained in me at a young age and that I still take with me now and I mean, just uh, how blessed I am to even have have a dad. I mean, we have so many guys on our team and just so many guys in general that really could use um, their father, like a father's guidance and, and a role model in their life that um, could lead them in the right way and set discipline. And, and I think that's so important. And, like, they really missed out on that and uh, none, none that they could do about it. And I, I'm just blessed that I had that. So that's why I started my foundation. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, if you want to yeah. – yeah, and I, I – man, I know your, your dad, he's looking down incredibly proud of you, man, because you have it, done a whole lot. I mean, for anybody that doesn't know, Doc is extremely respected, not only in his Penn State community, but back at home in Allentown, all around, he has carrying that Dawkins name very highly. And, you know, a lot of weight on his shoulders, and he's doing a fantastic job. So I do want to say bro. that, man. I appreciate uh, No doubt, man. I do want to talk about the Dawkins Foundation, yeah, though. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like you said, your, your father inspired you to do that. Yeah. What's some of the things that you get into with the Dawkins Foundation and st- stuff that, uh, that that you try to help out with? Yeah, the whole thing is just trying to eliminate um, wasted potential within the youth. Mm. Um, it's geared toward the youth, geared towards elementary, middle, and high school kids. Um, and we try to provide them with resources that maybe they wouldn't have access to. Um, like, for example, we did a, a backpack giveaway with school supplies. Like, man, how can we expect you to go in there and get a proper education? You don't got a proper bag and, and pencil and pens and, mm-hmm. and calculators to get the job done. So, you know, we provide that. Um, Christmas, uh, Christmas is important. I think Christmas is my favorite holiday growing up. So we'll do um, work with community centers and find some families that need help and get them proper Christmas gifts from get them situated with what they want, not just, like, one one of my biggest complaints with like the, the charity world and like foundations and such is like we think that because we don't utilize it that other people will like canned food drives for example man everybody wants to eat real food no one just wants to eat canned food man mm-hmm. so it's like getting these kids set up with the right proper things and yeah, you know absolutely. we have some stuff we have some summer programming some resilience training and such going on with some kids and some mm-hmm. a mentorship pro- program going on this summer so um, we got a lot of good things cooking up for young men and women in Allentown, Bethlehem, Eastern area. That's awesome, man. I know that's going to continue to get bigger as you sure. go on, uh, and you're just going to continue to make that bigger and better, man. So I'm excited Thank to you. see where that goes. Mm. I do want to hold this up, man. The Do Not do, do not, not doubt. doubt gear. Yeah, do not My doubt. man has been killing it. I'm sure you see a lot of people wearing it, people on the team. Uh, we love sporting it. That is Doc's brand. I think you got it. You got the tattoo right there oh, as yeah, well. Do, yeah, the do uh, right can you here. talk to me about yeah. number one, right where where the do not doubt comes from? Yeah. Uh, that that first, then we'll get into the business side of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I think I was in uh like my sophomore year of high school, and I was just playing around with like words, and it's like possible. You just add the M, impossible, stuff like that. Mm. And then uh, we just tried trying to trying to find words that you can make another word out of, and it was like doubt. But if you cross U B T out, it's just do. So mm-hmm. when you look at it, it's do not doubt. That's why the brands do not doubt. And um, that's just with everything. Like, if you look at, um, like, life, like, everything's hard when you when you mm-hmm. look at it from far away. Birds are like, oh, I got to do this. I got to go to college. I got to get married. I got to get a job. I got to do it. But when you just break it down one step at a time and you take it slow, D-O, do, just do it, man. Like, just take it one day at a mind, be present-minded, and just accomplish what you're trying to take care of, and you will. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And as far as the business aspect of it, um, I thought it was really good. For me, it really, it really lasts in my mind. Um, just the symbol of it. So I'm like, man, I would like to spread this word. And I think it would be cool to do so through, um, like, all form of my clothing. And yeah. me, I'm a sweatsuit guy. I know you're a sweatsuit guy. You're actually yeah. a pretty well-dressed man, bro. I'll tell you what, hey, man, you actually can put it on. That means well. a lot coming from you because yeah, this nah. dude has thrown on some of the most spectacular fits I've ever seen. Nah. And I'll tell you, I'm going to edit something in mm. right now, a couple photos showing that because you know I, I got it deep in the camera roll. <laughs> but, I, I, dude, I do want to say yeah. I'm going to flex this, especially once Doc continues to get more famous. I do have a one of a, a one of one right here on this back. I'm I'm pretty happy about because this is a sample. Yeah, dog was, dog yeah. went and he hooked me up with a sample uh, from the original sweatsuits that came out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 holding on this one forever. It ain't it ain't ever getting My sold or, or given away. So I, you know I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but. Keith, so obviously you've taken advantage of NIL. When it came Trump about, too, yeah. you have done a great job. I, I think you are uh, a great 
example of, you know, obviously someone hasn't hasn't started these four years, but mm-hmm. you have taken full advantage of NIL and made yourself some good money. Uh, can you talk about how that that opportunity is out there for all these athletes? Uh, how, like, how did you go about it? Are you sitting down writing business plans? Is it a lot of grinding? Are you talking to other people? Like, how did you how did you come about? How are you uh, cultivating all of this into what it is? Yeah, I mean, you you would probably say the same. You're a smart guy, like. Me and you have had plenty of conversations about, like, how can we make the, the most out of this platform and this opportunity? Like, I remember vividly me and you sitting in the, the yard's pool talking about, like, mm-hmm. man, we're going to own one of these. Like, how can we I'll make this I'll never forget pass- it, man. Yeah. I'll never forget that conversation. You know, and, I know, hell yeah. And when yeah, you're, like, you're, you're an intelligent guy, like, obviously you're going to make stuff like that happen. And, like, we think about, like, even this podcast now, like, you're, you, you're utilizing your name, your image, and your likeness and what you've mm-hmm. done and, like, how important you are and... That's just forward thinking in like business. Like I always view myself as a businessman. I, I don't really want to work for anybody ever in my life. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've, unless it's an NFL team. Um, but <laughs> the reality is, I, everything I, I want to do, I don't want to listen to rules. I don't want to listen to someone tell me what to do and how to do it. I don't want to be restrained in that box. Um, and like, if I want to do it, I just I just do it. To be to be honest with you, yeah. like I don't understand the concept of not thinking you can do like you can't do anything. Like, it's just so, like, to be honest with you, like, even now, like, I'm just kind of making my skin crawl a little bit. Like, you have access to everything. If you want to do something, you can legitimately load up Instagram, Google, TikTok, and someone will show you for three how to do something. I'm like, man, I want a clothing brand. I get on TikTok, like, how do you start a clothing brand? Two weeks later, I'm bringing in samples. I'm like, what do you guys think about this and that? And, like, and that's not with a lot of money or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like, that didn't require money. That just required, like, do do it that just required like mm. like try it like see what you can do with it um foundation i'm like all right like let me look up the proper way to start a foundation what's the paperwork look like what do i need do i need uh, articles of corporation stuff like that you as your pensa education we have professors here who want to help you um just like you've utilized professors to help you with mm. like even this like you can yeah. leverage these connections and like that's what's so beautiful about college and why people don't take advantage of these people want to help you all these people want to help these professors, like these students, like I got friends like that are helping me with marketing, like they're in marketing school. Mm-hmm. What better way to absolutely maximize the opportunity than actually doing something that you want to do rather than just reading and learning, the, like studying something, mm-hmm. case studies, where you can actually put it into fruition. So I'm like, yeah, I want to get back. I want to use the foundation, do it the right way. Boom, start a foundation. I want a clothing brand. I want to spread this message. Clothing brand. What's next? I don't know. Maybe some real estate. I don't know. Yeah, (laughs) got to. Got to get into it, man. What's the best investment you can make, man? Mm -hmm. We can't make more of it. You can't make more land. So stuff like that, you know. But you're you're such an intelligent guy. Like, I know you're going to dominate so many different industries and, like, as to who you are. But we've we've had so many conversations about, like, what's what's good is, is this money now. You can't take it with you, but you can leave it behind for your family and create generational wealth and leave behind legacy. Make sure your last name means something. That's what our, our fathers want for us. No so, like, that's what we do. You and me, mm-hmm. man. Like, just, just build and maximize stuff that people aren't willing to do. Yeah, be, being a great man, man. It, it definitely it, it takes a lot, but it, it is all worth it in the end. Uh, and that, that is one thing I'd say, talking about NIL, I feel like there is such uh, an opportunity out there for everybody to build something. And I, it, it almost hurts me now to see guys mm-hmm. not take that take advantage yeah. of that because it's, it's going to go away. And these... NIL checks in, you know, a decent amount of guys, I and mean, not really a decent amount, you know, a couple, per, one or two percent will make it to the NFL. It's mm-hmm. not a lot. So I, I think the ability to take advantage of it, whether that's building up your social media, whether that's creating a brand, whether that's creating your own brand. Like, I got to talk to Spice Adams for a while the other day, and I know, mm-hmm. Spice, uh, you're a big fan of Spices, and he was saying, man, like, if I had all these resources that y'all had, YouTube, TikTok, mm-hmm. uh, I would be, I would have been killing it way earlier. I had to go, I had to wait till if I had an idea on the weekend, I had to wait till Monday to go to the library to research it. Like yeah. it, it wasn't at your fingertips. So I, I feel like because we have a computer in our in our hands, our phone, mm-hmm. it's like I, it almost makes us more lazy and less likely to get after it and go do mm-hmm. something because it's like eh, I don't really feel like it. Um, so yeah, I, that would be my advice to to anybody in uh, college sports high school kids even, man, start creating that brand and finding those little niches that you that you like, those little things, and create create those relationships. I, I yeah. feel like that's the biggest thing, especially with, with going through recruiting and really whatever you do in life. You don't want to burn any bridges. Even no. if you don't like someone, man, no. just keep it cordial because you never know where someone is going to end up 
uh, and be in a position of power or help you out. Like just even from me retiring from football and the relationships that I built, I've been absolutely blessed. I mean, the reason I'm, I'm sitting in this room right now and I have this space is because of the re relationships that I have built uh, and because I took that initiative uh, before my injury and even after. Yeah. So I, I definitely feel like that's big, man. I want all athletes to attack each day. Uh, hey, have that do not doubt mindset, man. It, mm. It's important. Uh, dog, I do want to ask last thing. I want to ask you. Everybody loves your tattoos. Mm. You are you're well you're well known as like the most <laughs> the tatted man on guy. Penn State football. Yeah. You're the tattoo guy. And when I came in, I'm like, man, I gotta get like dog. Oh. I, that you inspired me to finish up the sleeve. I, I'm gonna continue going. But mm. what is your favorite tattoo that you have on your body? I'm curious. Yeah, um, I, man. I don't. I guess specifically, like I have one of my dad right here. It's a portrait of my dad. Um, probably can't get it on the camera, but um, portrait of my dad is just so the detail of it is, is spectacular. Um, mm. And, like, for me, tattoos are therapy, right? So, like, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the best guy in the world. Like, I, you know, I made some mistakes and stuff like that. And that therapy of, like, you know, going through the pain of it, like the pain of the tattoo, it almost feels like punishment a little bit, man. Anyone <laughs> that tells you that a tattoo didn't hurt, maybe they got, like, a little one or something. But if they did, like, a full sleeve, like, oh, it didn't hurt, man. They're lying to you. They're trying to be oh, Mr. Nah. Tough Guy, man. Yeah. That hurts. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm almost, like, you know, paying paying for, like, what my punishment for, like, you know, just, like, maybe internal thoughts and such like that. And it's it's very therapeutic for me. Um, I would say that one. Um, my godfather, his name is Nicholas Antonelli, who I'm named after. That's why I'm Nicholas at mm. six foot four, 300 some pounds, like <laughs> Nicholas. And it, it's a, a dice without dots. And that's just his email, is dice without dots. And I'm paying homage to him. Uh. Um, and then the last one, I would say, uh, I recently just got it. I've been waiting to get it. It's uh, If. It's IF if it's a poem from Rudyard Kipling, mm. and um, uh, when I was struggling, man, uh, I so one so last camp actually I was struggling bad. I was down bad. Like I was like, man, I'm not playing how I want to play. Mm. Uh, I'm not getting out of this. What I want to get out of it, man. I feel sorry for myself, which is one of the worst things you can say ever, is that you feel sorry for yourself. And I'm scrolling through YouTube, and when I'm down bad, I look up YouTube videos of my dad, like, see if I can get it, pull anything from it. Like, I'm a spiritual guy. Like, I believe in God and Jesus Christ. And, like, I'm like, maybe I'll, I'll pull some. Maybe there's some words in there I can find that can, that can like, lead me in the right direction. And I pull up this highlight reel, and it's just a clip of my dad with the poem If by Rudyard Kipling. Man, that's such a random thing for someone to post and make and put on the internet. I'm like, mm. man, this can't just be some coincidence. I don't believe in that. I, th I think everything happens for a reason. So I turn it on and watch it, and it's all like the, the highs and the lows of my dad's career with this poem playing. And, um, you know, there's just so many strong messages within that. And, and But the, the big, big thing is the poem is a father's advice to his son. Wow. Yeah, and I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, this is exactly what I needed, what I'm looking for. And... Um, Man, it just it gave me the chills, man. That's, said, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. God, sure. God, that, he he does everything for a reason, yeah, man. For sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know you're big on the most motivational videos, though. Yeah, I will absolutely. say, there, there's been a couple times, and I've actually always lived near Doc. We've always kind of yeah, been, yeah, yeah. You know, neighbor, now, still, yeah, neighbors yeah. to a certain extent. Uh -huh. We've never been next door. We're always in the same community. Yeah. Um, I walk in, this dude. David Goggins, he's got it going. Him and Tyler Elsden, they <laughs> they love getting themselves pumped up before a lift, a workout. Mm -hmm. uh, does, what kind of mindset, I mean, does that put you in? Because some people, it, it doesn't really do anything, and they yeah. say whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, like, who's going to carry the boats? Yeah, who's going to hey, carry, who's the, gonna boats, carry the boats? Man. For real, that's really the mentality, though. Like, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Mm -hmm. Who's going to make sure that my family's taken care of? Me, I'm the man of my house. Like, I'm the provider. That's what I was raised to be. I was raised to take care of my family and be a man of God. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I need a little subtle reminder through, like, a motivational video or maybe I need to find, like, different ways to, like, remind myself that that's who I am. But really what it is is just reminding me that I'm that badass MF that handles mm -hmm. business and gets done what I need to get done every single day consistently. And that's, like, it just provides, it just fuels me up, man, like, just the idea of, like, discipline and being who you want to be is all within your control. And you can control what you can control. It's, it's just, um, like, that's who I want to be. That's just who I am and, like, I mean, you, me and you yeah. sat and watched a lot of stuff, but absolutely, it just oh, you, man, you get me. I, I can feel your emotion yeah, coming man, out when you were just talking it, about it, man. This is you're definitely one uh, emotional dude in a good way, man. You, man, you bring it, it, and that's something I feel on the football field from you, absolutely. Real quick, I know I said we were about to be done, but I no, do have to ask. Chatting, you. Man. We, we yeah, were yeah, talking, we were talking about where we're living, yeah, yeah, uh, and that type of thing. And we'll talk about roommates real quick. Okay, man, you've lived with some with some some dudes now. Yeah, DJ Mustafer. Yeah. 
Aeneas Hawkins. Yeah, I have, man. What is it, what, what is it like living with those guys? I know you with Tyler Elston now and Hunter Norzad. Yeah. I actually have, ah, oh, man, I should have brought it. In my house, I have your Christmas card where, oh, they, yeah. where him, Hunter Norzad, and Tyler Elston wore matching pajamas. They had the, yeah. the wife beater on with, yeah. with the, the, the yeah. red the uh, Walmart, checkered. Yeah, Walmart checkered yeah, pants. Yeah, the checkered pants. Yeah. That was some cute stuff, man. But uh, talk to me first about living with PJ and Aeneas Hawk, PJ Mustafer and Aeneas Hawkins. What was that like? Even before that, man, in the apartments, I live with Cole Brevard, Fatorma Mobile. I'll be playing against Fatorma Mobile week one and playing against Cole Brevard at the end of the week, Purdue. Wow. So I'll be playing against playing against two guys that I live with, which was feminine stuff. They're crazy guys. But firstly, PJ Mustafer, fats. There fats. was a point in time in our kitchen where we only had cookies and milk in the fridge and, like, outside. Like, <laughs> Yo, was he Santa Claus? Bro, look at him. I mean, he's a belly like one dude. Like, he's a yeah, – that's chunks, man. He's a good dude. Boy, that's my shots. guy, though. Now, that's my guy. Pat, PJ's no, my guy. Like, he is, he You is. know I'm going to call you fat, bro. Like, you are. Like, I am too, but, like, you were just a little more than me. And by little, I mean a lot. And by jelly, I mean belly. You know what I mean? So, like, you're wow. a chunky guy. But that's uh, my guy, PJ. He's like, he's just – one of the best dudes in the world, yeah. though. There's one of the most fearless leaders, genuine guys. Oh, my gosh. I miss him so much. Yeah. But he was, like, the group of leaders that we had, Tig, PJ, yeah. Cliff, those yeah. guys. But, like, PJ, really, he was, like, the heart and soul. Like, yes. I would look to him, and he would get me fired up. I I, I truly have so much love for that guy because mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. is he's one of the funniest dudes off the Dude. field. And you'll have such a good time with him. But when you step on that joint... He is ready to go. Pain, boy. And he, yeah, he's, he's bringing the pain. Top five dude. And uh, a big media personality, man. Real quick, before we step away from PJ, I will say I went over once and I left a bag of chips in your house. Yeah. Dude, I came back 45 minutes later and PJ and Aeneas are watching a movie on the couch. Yeah. And I'm like, where, where are my chips at? And this dude, PJ, is funneling them in his mouth. And there's like one left. He goes, oh, sorry, dog. Yeah. That's, I, th- I feel like that's a perfect story to emulate PJ Mustafer. That If you don't put food in front of PJ... That you do not want eaten because it'll yeah. be gone. Can't leave but, it around. For nah, guy, don't man. don't nah, leave he's that. He's a food scavenger. Around. Yeah, he yeah. is. He'll he'll take advantage of any opportunity food wise given to him. Yeah. But living with Aeneas Hawkers, man, Penn State media personality. Yeah. What's that like? I mean, he's a funny cat. Yeah, he is, man. That's Hawk and Dog, man. We got like countless banter. Like, yeah. And he, you know, his bedroom, the Hawk's Nest, is the he, Hawk's That's nest. exactly how it is too, man. Like the guy. The guy's a bird, man. He just lives yeah. crazy. Like, yeah, he's in there doing what he does. And for some reason, birds naturally gravitate towards him. Like, he's got crows <laughs> that hang out in his window and stuff. It's kind of weird, bro. He's <laughs> bird man out. But uh, probably not, not not the greatest roommate in the whole entire world. Uh. Like, you know, we got some – he's better li- suited living by himself. Mm. Uh, no, nah, I'm just playing. Hawk's the best guy. Our, our boy's growing up, nah, though. He's got a, nah, he's got a yeah, girlfriend. Nah, he's he's nah, growing I'm up. I'm just playing. Hawk, Hawk's <laughs> the best dude. Like, Hawk, um, genuine guy. Like, live, live with him two years and – just um, countless, like, he just brings energy. I mean, social battery, like, the guy's an entertainer. Basically. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You, bro, you two together, like, mm-hmm. if you sit in a room with Hawk and Dog, you will not stop laughing. Mm-hmm. It is endless laughter mm-hmm. and endless banter, and you guys, you just mesh so well. So, that's why, I mean, that's why I love your guys' podcast. I mm-hmm. had a good time on there. You uh, ran it, though, bro. You're, like, hey. you're next up with this sport. Like, I don't think, I, I hope, like, the people are still watching, like, this, see, like, this guy is bringing you like. I, firstly, like, he should be in the NFL right now. Like, I don't, he's I, he's too humble to say, but like, Landon should be in the NFL right now. Like, you look at what he did in high school, what he was already accomplishing on the field. Like, we all know that he would have been a draft pick like by now already. He didn't need no four years or five years. He could have done it in three. Um, and he was always a student of the game. Like, you always naturally understood stuff quickly, which is why that. you got on the field so soon. But, like, your analysis on offensive line play and just offense in general and, like, the things that you see, like, the normal – and like, if you if you haven't played college football specifically at Penn State within a scheme, like, those guys will not be able to see what you see out there. And um, your analysis is just awesome. And, like, it's real. Like, he knows stuff that, like, other people don't know. You have, a, like, a clear advantage and, like, a clear, like, no for the game. And, like, I think people are really, like – if you're not seeing what he's putting out there on, on Twitter or, or X, I guess is what it's called now and stuff, like, he's bringing, like, real stuff that, like, we are talking about. Like, it's in, you're basically getting inside the locker room look at, at stuff, so. I appreciate I appreciate the yeah. shout-out, man. I uh, That's definitely my goal is to mm-hmm. try to make this, like, what I'm putting out, I'm putting out a ton of different stuff, whether it be film breakdowns, mm-hmm. whether it be podcasts, but I'm trying to make – it cool and fun. Like I don't. I yeah. want it to be similar. How you guys are on the lines, then, where you kind of are, are just are just talking, and it's not this coach speak where I'm asking you, yeah. sitting there, and you're, you're just giving me generic answers. Like we're sitting here rapping and, and educating people on whatever it may be. I feel like we have such a good time, so no, I'm excited to keep doing this, man. But my first real guest on the uh, Behind the Wall podcast, Nicholas Dawkins. Wow. I appreciate. you. I didn't add the Paul. I didn't add yeah, the middle I name. Just but did there, there. Hey, my fault. My fault. <laughs> Nicholas Paul Dawkins. <laughs> Uh, Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it, brother. My brother for life. My guy.